Hello everybody, my name is Sandy. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I'm going to be coloring a clean and simple sympathy card. And clean and simple is a misnomer for me probably. There's not a whole lot that I do that's particularly simple. But this is a Technique Tuesday stamp called Agapanthus and it's the July 2015 Greenhouse Society stamp. They come out with a new flower every month. And if you love flower stamps, this might be something for you to look into because they are gorgeous. I stamped this onto some Desert Storm Nina cardstock. And it's Nina, which means it's gonna take Copics in about the same way as your other types of white and cream colored Nina, except that the colors are gonna go darker. It's going to be as though there's a, a craft cast over all of the colors, so you sometimes need to choose brighter colors in order to make that work. And here I'm using the B6 family. You see the B60 barely shows up. The color that you're seeing is actually probably more moisture than it is ink color because it's really, really, really light, but the paper is wet. On our white cardstock and our cream cardstock, we really just don't see the moisture in the paper but on this desert storm, it's very easy to see it because when it gets wet, you can immediately tell the color difference. What I decided to do was use some colored pencil along with my Copics. And in general, you want to use your colored pencil last. There's a few spots where I'm going to add a little bit of dark on top of the uh, image later on, but I want to make sure that I express to you that it's important. You can ruin the nibs of your markers if you're not careful. So I will talk a little bit more about that as we go on. But that flower was done in real time, so you could see how long that would actually take. And then I'm going to speed through a bunch of this, and I'm only going to color kind of half the image at a time. So you can watch how the image develops and compare it to where it started out and what it what changes get made as each step gets added to it. I think a lot of folks tend to stop before an image is completed and there's just a few touches that you can make with either adding more highlights or more shadows that can add such a pop to an image and if you if you just don't stop too soon and keep going until you really get those final touches put in, it can make a huge difference. So you can see here just how much difference the white pencil makes. It starts making each one of those flowers look dimensional just by adding the little white tips on them. And it doesn't have to be super, super white because this is a very soft white. Here's where I'm adding dark over top of where on top of the image after I've added the pencil. Now I'm being really careful not to go into the areas where I already had pencil there. I was only doing the coloring in the darkest areas that I had already colored with Copic. So I'm trying not to touch the Copic to the color, uh, color pencil wax. The color that I'm using here, YG17, is normally a very bright YG color and you can see how dark it goes when it's colored onto a colored cardstock. So you always want to pick colors that are a little brighter than what you normally might have used for that image. And when I want to do some outlining on this, I did some tests on a piece of scratch paper to figure out exactly what colors were going to work. And before I made my decision, I let them dry for a little while just to make sure I knew what they looked like. Here I wanted a strong color right next to the image, so I would get that real strong shadow because that's going to add to the dimension in the image. It's going to make the flowers pop more. Next to it, I added a lighter E color. And even though this looks like it's going to be like crazy dark and, and that sort of thing, you're going to be surprised by the time it's all done. Here I'm adding the zero marker and you know, that looks really crazy, but look at what happens when it dries. It all gets soft all over again. And now I'm going to go in with my Signo pen and add some white detail to the insides of the flowers. And I'm going to apologize. My kitty is next to me and she's having a little bath and making little grunty noises and things. So uh, she was purring earlier and I thought that would be a nice background, but instead we're getting grumbly, grumbly noises in the background. I know none of you ever has kitties who interrupt anything of yours, right? 
So let's get back to the coloring. I'm adding some real dark purple depth to these now. I just wanted to add a little bit of a purple cast to it because I wasn't getting enough of that purple color coming through. Even though the B6s have a little bit of purple, I just wanted to emphasize that more. So I'm just putting it in the very darkest areas and kind of a light coat of it a little bit out into the medium tone areas, but very, very soft and light and using a super light touch, not letting that color build up much. Now for the construction of my card, I've got some dimensional adhesive all around the circle because I want that circle to hold up. I don't want it to sag because that will take away from the look of clean and simple. Clean and simple is usually tidy. There's not saggy, soft looking parts to it. So I wanted it to stay nice and nice and crisp. So here we have some extra flowers that I colored on another stamped image that I'm just adding over top so I can get some dimension on it. I'm using power tabs to do the dimension on these because power tabs are not as thick as the uh, dimensional roll of adhesive that I was using on the other part of the card and it gives several layers of depth that way. For the sentiment, I did the same brown colors around the sari so that I would end up with the same kind of shading around it and then just have my beautiful image popping out of that circle. Now I want to take a really quick look at what these same colors are going to look like on the white cardstock, just so you can know what the difference is and how dark they went on the Desert Storm. I did add a little bit of V12 to that flower because I wanted that purple and I didn't want to have to go back in with the pencil and add the, the dark pencil to it. So I just added a layer of the, the V12. But look how intense and blue that color is where it really did go into a kind of a dullish blue, blue violet type of color on the Desert Storm paper. So it makes a huge difference what paper you're coloring on, but it also gives it a very different look. This one is gonna be much brighter. The colors are much more intense. And I think they, they both have their value and they, they both are quite beautiful, but just in a very different way. So here is the finished white card, uh, completely different than the other one, but I think they both came out just gorgeous. And thank you to Technique Tuesday for providing me with this stamp because it was just so very much fun to color. So here are a couple of other videos. If you're interested in watching some more stuff that I have done, would love to meet up with you on another video and answer your questions here on this one or in any other video on my channel. I hope you have a really fantastic day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.